Tanking is as much part of the battlefield DNA as hectic 64 player infantry battles and pilots dogfighting in the sky. And when you don't have those pilots one banging you out of existence, you can go on some pretty crazy killstreaks. To do all that, contrary to popular belief, you don't have to sit on some hillside camping all game and enraging every single enemy you kill. Instead, by paying attention to key aspects of tanking, which we will cover in today's video, alongside picking the right tank and right playstyle, you'll be dominating the enemies with ease in no time. Today's gameplay is a selection of three different tanking streaks with very different playstyles, so by all means pay attention to the differences between the anti-tank and infantry support gameplay or the linear versus non-linear maps and game modes. But without further ado, here's your guide to proper tanking in Battlefield 5. Successful tanking really has three elements to it. The tank itself, your position with it, and your choice of playstyle. And we're going to cover each element here separately in today's video. Regarding the first part then, knowing your tanks, the tank itself, this applies both to picking the tank you are going to be using and the recognizing of different danger levels enemy tanks pose to you. The assessment of course differs from tank to tank, thus if you're piloting a light tank like the 38T or Staghound and see a Tiger or Churchill, your best bet is probably to get out of its line of sight as soon as possible. Conversely, if you are in a Tiger and see a light tank attempting to flank around you, you're probably going to want to respond immediately as that's going to pose a pretty big threat. Now covering the tanks, we're not going to go into excessive detail about each one or what specializations make them special. That kind of detail is best dealt with in a dedicated video providing a guide for a specific tank, which is something I may consider doing at a later date. But speaking in general terms, light tanks generally specialize in anything that will benefit from mobility, thus flanking heavier tanks to get at those juicy rear weak spots, more on those of course in just a moment, or anti-infantry action, pushing through the front line, taking out a few targets and then quickly retreating before getting swarmed by overeager assault players. Pick this tank if you're going up against almost exclusively infantry or on maps where frequent flanking of less mobile, heavier enemy armor is actually possible because depending on the game mode and the map, that isn't something you can necessarily pull off regularly or reliably. The medium tanks in turn are a general great jack of all trades kind of vehicle. Decently mobile, decently armored and decently well armed, they are probably the least specialized tank variant which brings with it a certain simplicity but also of course a lack of clear advantage over certain enemies in certain situations. Pick this tank in general if you're not sure what you're going up against or are likely to be forced into engaging both infantry and armor on a repeat basis in a variety of scenarios and also likely at a variety of ranges. The heavy tanks then are currently very strong, difficult to take out and extraordinarily well armed. They are ideal generally for game modes and maps where infantry or armor is unlikely to be able to flank you and you can surround yourself with friendly forces trying to push onto or for example defend a certain point on a more linear game mode or map. They excel both against infantry and armor, however are definitely better suited to take on the later as their limited mobility provides enemy infantry with great opportunities to take them out with quick flanking maneuvers. Pick this tank class when engaging lots of enemy vehicles or on maps with limited pathing for enemies that allow you to protect your flanks and limit your exposure to possible danger. The main exception to all this are the fixed turret designs with the medium tank Archer and Stuck 4 as well as the heavy Churchill gun carrier. Those essentially act as tank hunters as of now, though I frankly don't think they are very effective as such. With the Archer in particular, you have not a chance in hell going up against something like a Tiger. Even if you get a couple of shots off before he sees you, generally you're just going to lose that fight. So the tank hunters, if you so will, or fixed turret medium tanks in particular generally aren't that viable and don't really fit into any of the previous mentioned categories. But just as important when it comes to tank know-how in Battlefield 5 is understanding your enemy, what they are capable of and where you can do the maximum damage against them. In terms of the most lethal tanks you'll face on the battlefield are of course the Storm Tiger, which can one-shot a medium tank, the Tiger 1, especially if equipped with the APCR or Heat T rounds, the Type 97 when equipped with the Type 5 75mm barrel, which is easily recognizable by its extreme long length, 
and to a lesser extent but still relevant, the Sherman if using the Heat T rounds, and both the Churchill and Churchill gun carrier, especially when equipped with the right anti-tank focused specializations. So, while knowing what tanks pose the greatest threat to you is good and important, knowing how and where to attack them is of course even better. In Battlefield 5, since update 5.2, all tank hits are either classified as a ricochet, normal or critical hit. And which of those you get, of course depends on what angle your shot connects with your enemy's vehicle. The more perpendicular the better frankly, but depending on the tank, different parts of its armor will be more vulnerable than others. So, in terms of your angles and damage multipliers for light tanks. At the front, you'll be looking at a critical hit within 10 degrees of your perfect 90 degree perpendicular shot, a relatively low tolerance. Normal damage will apply to shots coming in at angles between 30 and 80 degrees, leaving only the most steeply angled shots at 30 degrees or lower to ricochet off the armor. The very same angles apply to the rear and side for light tanks, interestingly enough, though of course the multipliers for damage are slightly higher there, thus getting a critical, perfectly perpendicular shot to the rear of a light tank, while still just as difficult to get in terms of the angles that will allow you, will net you significantly better damage than a critical shot to the front of a light tank's armor. Medium tanks, that is the Valentine AA, Flak Panzer IV, Valentine Mark VIII, Panzer IV, LVT, Kami, and of course the Sherman and Type 97 all share the same critical, normal, and ricochet angles. At the front, just like with the light tanks, you have a 10 degree tolerance for critical hits, meaning between an angle of 80 and 90 degrees, you'll end up with your maximum amount of damage against that part of the armor. Then, much like with the light tanks, between 30 and 80 degrees you get a normal hit, and between 0 and 30 degrees you'll end up with a ricochet shot. Again, as with the light tanks, the angles on the sides are the same as the front, though those critical hits are more effective and do about twice as much damage as otherwise a normal hit would, a significant step up in terms of damage multiplier when compared to the front. With the rear, the medium tank's critical hits can be achieved far more easily though, with a shot coming in at an angle between 60 and the perfect perpendicular 90, netting you a critical hit for about 2.5 times more damage than normal. Normal hits are scored between 30 and 60 degrees, and again, the sub 30 degree hits will only net you a ricochet. The heavy tanks and tank hunters, as I've dubbed them, are frankly a good bit more complicated though. The Tiger, Churchill and Stug 4 cannot be hit for critical damage at the front at all, and will ricochet shots between 0 and 40 degrees, and in the case of the Stug 4, at a more standardized 0 to 30 degree angle. The side armor and rear follow the same angles and multipliers as the medium tanks do, and thus are a far better place to target a heavier tank. This also means that if forced to engage one of these head-on, going for the tracks, which counts as a side hit, even if the target is hit from the front, will net you far better damage than any other shots you can make. Just hitting those tracks could possibly be difficult if the tank is either moving, or of course behind cover, or at longer ranges. The Valentine Archer behaves mostly like a medium tank in terms of its frontal and side armor, but cannot be critically hit in the rear, which is the historical front. Instead, you get a ricochet at angles, as usual, below 30 degrees, but otherwise just a normal hit, with a critical hit never available. The Churchill Crocodile and Sturmtee, for the sake of completeness here, are classified essentially as heavy tanks in terms of their frontal and side armor performance, though while the angles are the same, the multipliers for critical damage are significantly lower than otherwise. In terms of rear shots, on the crocodile you need to hit close to a perfect shot that is between 80 and 90 degrees, so only a 10 degree tolerance for an actual critical hit, meaning the crocodile is one of the hardest to get a critical hit on tanks in the game. The Sturmtiger there is generally more susceptible, following the same kind of damage multipliers and critical hit angles as the Tiger would for a rear shot, which means flanking that is far more likely to net you the kind of high damage multipliers you're looking for. Okay though, so enough numbers, you know what your tank is capable of, you know where it takes more or less damage, you know which tanks to pick to get the job done, and you know where to target enemy tanks depending on what you end up encountering on the battlefield. How do you put all this in practice? Sure, target enemy tanks for their weak points, wherever possible, and try to get a as perpendicular shot off as possible. But what about your own positioning? 
Well, that of course always should be at an angle to your enemy, ideally forcing them to go for a normal or ricochet shot, but essentially limiting the chance for a critical hit. Also, if you're in a heavy tank and have the opportunity to use some cover to reduce your profile and more importantly protect your tracks, that will massively help you out as it will essentially completely eliminate the possibility of them ever getting a critical hit no matter their angle as hitting your frontal armor will never net more than normal damage. But really, there is a hell of a lot more to proper positioning than just angling. It's an important part and something a lot of players, including myself, sometimes neglect, but it is far from the be and end all of successful tanking. In tank battles with more evenly matched tanks, example a medium tank versus a medium tank or a heavy tank versus a heavy tank, what is often far more decisive is who engages first and who spots who first. And this is where I see far too many players using tanks as battering rams instead of more finely tuned strategic tools. In the same way that running straight at an enemy objective full of enemy players as an infantry player usually doesn't net you the best results, driving right onto an objective on breakthrough with your tank instantly surrounded by enemy infantry and armor generally just results in you going back to the spawn screen. So instead you want to be smart about where you position your tank. Flanking and coming from unexpected angles absolutely is something that all but the heaviest of tanks can regularly pull off on the battlefield. Equally, maintaining a full overview of all the possible threats around you is something that is vital to a tanker's survival, especially the more aggressive or close quarter you get, meaning more light and medium tanks, more often than not, instead of heavy tanks. This is where third person mode can come in very handy and I have a tendency of taking out numerous infantry targets in close quarters in third person as that is a perfectly viable strategy, but it also more importantly allows you to see people creeping up behind you or see people trying to flank you with their lunge mine, for example. Just as important to that is of course limiting your exposure. This doesn't mean hiding on a hill, but it means making sure you know from what angles enemies are most likely to come or from what angles they can engage you. Great maps where this is easy to exemplify is Rotterdam, where you have set lanes and thus in certain positions you can ensure that your tank may only ever be attacked for example, from the front or in the worst case scenario from the side, but never from the rear, giving you a guaranteed escape path, something that a good tanker is always going to want to have secured behind him and able to use in order to get out of dodge when things get a bit spicy. So as we've covered positioning and engaging the enemy, we're already starting to move to the final aspect of tanking we'll be covering in today's video, and that's playstyle. Aggressive versus defensive and infantry versus armor focused are arguably the main differences here, but it's very important to understand that depending on the situation, you should be changing strategies here on a whim, not necessarily sticking to one just because you've spawned in with one type of tank and you're now going to play either passive or anti-tank focused for the rest of the game. Now, choosing the right strategy in general can be as simple as running good tank killing setups on maps where you are facing a lot of enemy armor, but also as complicated and risky as using a heavy tank like the Tiger to push right onto an objective in order to help your team capture that final point, cost it, well, what it will. Be smart about which tank you pick and make sure you use it in a way that best suits it while also taking into account the needs of your team. Are you defending on a game of breakthrough and facing an onslaught of enemy tanks? Maybe don't go for an infantry specialized light tank, I highly recommend the Tiger. Playing a game of conquest where teams are moving around the map quickly and you're engaging a mixture of infantry and armor, pick something flexible, a Churchill gun carrier probably isn't going to be your best bet here given the non-linear nature of the game. In the end, whatever you do though, don't sit back on a hill and snipe enemies from afar. Unless you are consistently taking out tanks that way and are essentially robbing the enemy team of any chance to build up any armor presence on any point on the map, you're probably not helping your team very much and are definitely not as impactful on the game as you could be if you were tanking slightly more aggressively. After all, tanks really have three jobs in Battlefield 5, anti-infantry, anti-tank, and, and this is an important one people forget, distracting and drawing fire from your fellow infantry players. Every enemy that is trying not to get killed by you in your tank or is actively trying to take you out is an enemy your fellow teammates will have a much easier time taking out. After all, they're distracted and they're focused on you, which makes your team's job just that much easier in taking them out. But that pretty much wraps it up for tanks, 
in Battlefield 5. Feel free to share your own tanking tips down below. If you enjoyed the video, rating would be much appreciated. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 5 video.